Hello, Shine. Long time no see. Hi. I haven't seen you for really, really, really long time. Like almost a year already. Oh my God. So today we are going to talking about the dystopian technology. But before we get started, let me share a news with you. Have you ever heard of Liu Huoran? Yes, I know. I know yeah, this. Yeah, it is a very famous Chinese actor. And uh, this is him. Handsome and cute. Right? Yeah, he's so cute. So all of the Chinese people are actually calling him cutie pie. So these days he and his company are facing a really big PR emergency that one of the sex videos or we call private videos is spreading away all over the Chinese virtual communities. And everyone noticed that the face in the sex video is actually Liu Horan. But his company has mentioned that this video is the fake because his face has been changed by the artificial intelligence, which is the AI. So the whole video is a fake. The characters inside the Liu Han's face is actually a fake. So this today leading to us to talking about the dystopian technology. So Vicky, do you think uh, should we need should we need to curbing dystopian technology? Um, for me, I think we should define what's dystopian technology first, then we talk about the curbing issues. So for me, I do think like dystopian technology is the technology that can cause the bad effect and the side effect to the society or the individual, such as the technology that helps people to get money from my bank account or stealing my fingerprint and the one that helps the human trafficking and the one that the promote bad effect or harm to the individual such as Liu Horan. Suddenly he's a really poor guy, you know. Suddenly everyone like see him like it. So yeah, so this is what I, for my perspective, understanding of the instrument technology. So what about you, Shine? Um, for me, I think um, utopian technology is only care about and, and it's focused on the negative effect brought brought about by new technology. It, yeah. is, it, is, it will um, bring the negative impact to our society. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for you, do you think that we should curb the dystopian technology? Yes. I, th I think we must cur curb this technology because as we can see it, um, there are many examples of the harm caused by the new technology. Most of the mm -hmm. most common situation is to deceive the user rather than directly causing physical harm to the user. We can see on social media and many online platforms, the computer robot designed by the criminal to, to, de to default user trust can, can be seen everywhere. At the same time, yeah. Many evidence show that people now can easily tell tell the robot their secret and they they will feel very very good very well after they communicating with the, with this uns, unsentimental this device and even mm -hmm. give us some very secret information. However, yeah, that's true. We do not know whether the information we are talking about will be transmitted to another person hand my robot or not. Yeah, you know, that reminds me the last lesson that I'm taking the sociology class. The lecturer actually mentioned that we can get married with a robot in the future. I was kind of looking forward to before, but right now I'm not. What if the robot is actually created by the criminals and it aims to steal my information or steal anything? Uh -huh. Oh my God, it's getting creepy and uh, on my privacy, even though I know that the privacy in society right now is not exist at all, but mm, creepy, scary. No, 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 no. So the reason that I am suggesting and I'm supporting to curbing the distributing technology is because that, mm, let me show you this first, because I think that even though without distributing technologists, people nowadays are using the normal technologies to do bad things already. So the um, a very famous Asian Chinese philosopher, Xun Zi, he mentioned that, that he's the first people in China, he's the first Chinese people mentioned like people are born evil, human nature is bad. And if you don't do anything, just let them go with it. 
So it will be cause the chaos. So this is the reason that I'm actually supporting that we should say no to this kind of technology because um, let me show you with um, news that the, actually happened quite a long time ago. Uh, it is called Korean Enthroom Cases. Have you ever heard of it? Or what do we call the Korean telegram, telegram crime? Not really. Not really. Okay, telegram is the tools that we use on the robots class, right? We send each other text and them and the silly pictures like that, right? So this is what we do with the telegram. It's like a Facebook, it's like a message, or it's like a WhatsApp. But in Korean, people are using uh, some criminals are using this to send illegal sex videos. To share this kind of content, especially especially the ladies in the video, a lot of them are forcing to do this. You can see that people are slapping them and kick them and forcing them to shoot. And the youngest in the video is actually 13 years old. So 13 years old, they just graduated from primary school. Ages like that, and they appear in the sex videos like that. So for me, I do think that even with the regulations, with the law today, there are people doing this already, changing the normal technology into the bad one. But what if we say no, or we just let it go, we just let it develop? The situation will get harder and harder, and people will get more used to this. So what do you feel about this, Shine? Mm, human, human nature. I think mm. human nature is depend on depend on who la. because I think the most most important is our mor morality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. So morality actually is the second reason that I'm going to talking about because you know human nature actually has a lot of factors can be influenced this and there's a lot of discussions a lot of arguing to talk about human is good or bad so and this is not the topic that we are go going to focus today but the one that i'm going to share is the morality of the people because the things that i'm worrying about is with the development of the dystopian technology people will get less and less morality than before like um, the illustrative effect when you get used to something and when you see something more often or more frequently than before, you tend to believe these kind of things is true or the fact or these are factors is the fact. So if we like this, I do think like um, when the young generations can accept the result of this driven technology, for example, the technology that helps uh, for human trafficking, when people notice more of it, they will feel like hey, it's, the, it's okay to deal with it and it's okay to do like this. So this is the thing that I'm worrying about. And let me share you with an other uh, cases that actually happened this year and uh, which is investigated by the BBC company. So the, there is a website called OmniFans. Have you ever heard of it? OmniFans? I don't know. Not really. So OnlyFans is like um, the website that helps the pornography industries, the people, the creators, they send in their nude pictures, their sex contents, and uh, a lot of things into the website. So this is the way they can get a benefit from it. They earn money from this way. So it is totally okay because it's their decision. They can choose what kind of things they want to post and they have the right to do so. But the thing that I'm worried about, the thing that BBC is worrying about, because they notice that there's a lot of content. See, actually, the ladies in them is under 18 years old, which means they're just a kid. It's the children. And the children inside it in the sex video appear in the sex video. Especially there's um authorities are worried about it because they feel like there are a lot of human trafficking doing with it because the videos only show the half button of the ladies, but not the faces. And uh, it's apparently that they are forcing to do so. So after the BBC investigated this, how the OnlyFans website deal with this actually really weird. They didn't, they didn't ban the creators, but they just give some warnings to them. And they said, hey, you can do that, give warnings like that, and but didn't delete anything from the content. So the reason I feel it is happening is because the 
online fans companies are already getting into getting in touch with this stuff way often than others. So for them, they feel like this is a normal thing for them. They feel like it's not that big deal. You guys are overreacted. So what if when we get used to, or when we get exposed to this kind of things more often and more often and more often, we will become less morality than before. We will feel okay when everything happens like for child pornography, ah, okay. For sex, um, like for human trafficking, ah, never mind. It's just not a big deal. It happens every day in our life. And there's an app for it. There's a technology for it. So this is the thing that I'm actually worrying about. So, yeah. Um, like just now I say the robot, when, when a robot can communicate with mm. human in a natural, in our natural language, um, what will happen? We must, we oh, must, we must be extra vigilant about our communication partner and the content of our conversation. Because when when the robot have the ability to record our every move, we we need to work hard to think about more questions like how how will they store and share this information? Because some yeah. information recording device may only be used for entertainment, but they can easily be used for more unbearable purpose. If we are used to getting along with robots, if the technolo technology around us can record and process language, image, action, let alone record our secret, where will this information go? Where will they be stored? Who who has the access to, to this information that we, we, we talk? If we become accustomed to life a company by robot, our every move, every every word, everything may uh, maybe maybe will all over exposed to another person. So at the end of the day, some criminals know more than me. They know more of me than I do. I don't even know what kind of a person I am, but they do. They know, oh, Vicky is that a kind of a person. Oh my God. So if it is to have like this, I do think this is can cause a lot of the social dilemmas. And uh, for example, when you get exposed to something that you actually didn't believe in before, but now you believe it because the information, there's like two people are fighting inside of you, are arguing, should you trust it? Should you not trust it? And I do worry about that. It will cause some generation of in the future. For example, for me, I access to a lot of information. So for me, I already feel like a lot of things are totally okay. So my morality is over here. What if uh, about my parents? They don't get in sex, uh, sex with the technology that much and they don't, take a look at a, a lot of new stuff. So the morality is like over here. So when we have some discussion about something, we will definitely have a certain gap between us. So at the end of the day, we will have a fight because I have my opinion, they have their opinion. So in the end of the day, they were going to fight like each other. So this is the things that I'm really worried about. So for you, Shain, what do you think that oh, how we can manage it to solve this problem or how to help this problem to mm -hmm. Have a yeah. I think we can we can create a department to to protect the people who buy the um, electronic device or like mm. like a uh, robot uh, uh handphone uh, like this uh, because um mm. when when the rob when the robot or the 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 things inside out the will uh, the things uh, uh, try to steal our important information so we can the 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 department can um, protect us very mm. Yeah, I get you. It's like, uh, I really need an organization, you know. I really need an organization to help us to protect because I do know there's a lot of apps is actually eardropping these days. So what if there's actually um, technology helps the apps to eardropping their, to their customers? No, you can't do that. And uh, this is the things. And especially for me, I do think that if we, we want to improve these kind of situations, we can, first of all, I think we do need a better or we need a powerful cybersecurity department that actually who's who actually checking 
the information posted in the social media? Like, have you guys really done the research before you send some something online? And have you guys really have evidence when you say these kind of issues? And I think they need, especially they need to have a exact rule for the social media platforms. For example, like OnlyFans, if you guys want to share, they need to have a rule book of what kind of content is actually crossing the line. So when it crosses the line, you need to cut it immediately. And why not, what a kind of content is actually acceptable? So you can leave it right there. So it, the rules need to be exact and not ambiguous. And the next thing I think only ourselves can help ourselves, you know? So the schools should provide more like classes or lessons or curriculum that helps us to think independently like without influence by the others so i didn't need a class that actually teaching people how to question everything when you see something you're questioning at first is it true or not is the story fake or not is the fact a fact or not so yeah i think this kind of lessons should be included especially from a very very young age because it, during my age it's very hard to influence me to teach me anymore <laughs> yeah so that's all for what i want to share do you have anything you want to share more i think it's uh that's all for my this sharing. that's good it's i very i really enjoy talking to you and uh, this is a really good discussion that I have learned a lot of insight from you. So that's all for our discussion and uh, I will see you tomorrow at the class. Bye-bye, <laughs> see you Bye. tomorrow.